in this tutorial, what we're going to do is take a look at how we can uh, take control in our game and add some interactivity and allow the user to make inputs. One of the ways you can do that is using the mouse and the other is with the keyboard. So we're going to have a little play around today uh, with the mouse and we'll see what we can do. So the first thing to do uh, is here I am on bontocode.com and I'm in the week three notes at the moment, uh, the ones that say mouse events just here. And before I do anything else, I'm going to pick up a fresh copy of the template that we've been using. So I've got something to work with. So I'm going to right click on there. I use save link as. I'm in Firefox. It might say save target as if you're using a different browser. And I'm going to navigate into my H drive, computer science, year nine, and Pygame, like so. Given this is week three, it's probably a good idea that I rename this. So I'll call it week three template like that, and I'll save it. What I can then do is come into Pygame that I've got loaded up just here. And as it happens, because I've previously been working, Pygame's automatically loaded up what I've been working on in the past for me. It says week three template here, so I can double click it there to open the work. Or if yours doesn't look like that, you can always go file and open. And uh, again, as always, for some reason, it quite often starts you off. One's well, been very good today, actually. But quite often, it starts you off somewhere in this uh, C drive like this. And you can, you'll see something a little bit like that. If that does happen to you, you just need to scroll up to the top of the list, shut down that C there so you can see everything, and here's my H drive, and there's my computer science, and there's my year nine, and there's my Pi game, and there's week three template. So let's get that opened up. Okay, so uh, just like before, it's the same thing that we used in the week two session. You've got two different components to the code effectively. You've got the setup stage of the code, which is up here for getting things all ready to go. So that's where we set up some colors and how big we want the screen to be and some basics. And then you've got the main game loop. And this is the part of the code that runs and runs and runs and runs and runs over and over and over again, as long as the game, uh, you know, we let it continue running. We don't try and close the window. So what can we do to grab the mouse? Well, let's take a look at what the instructions over at Born to Code are telling us. It just so happens, I've got one here. So the first idea we want to get to grips with is this idea of uh, events. Now, an event in computer science and programming is anything where uh, something happens to the computer. So it could be a mouse click, or it could be you've got a gamepad plugged in and you click a button, or it could be a keystroke on the keyboard, anything uh, a little bit like that. And the way that this works is that you have a set of code that is uh, hopefully listening for events to come in. And it's constantly, it's sole role in life is to say, has someone clicked a button, has someone moved the mouse? And it checks over and over again thousands of times a second. That's your event listener. And as soon as the event listener detects that something's happened, what it then does is it passes the fact that's happened to an event handler, and the event handler does whatever you say you want it to. So you could say that when I push the letter Y, I'd like a Y to appear on the screen. You could say that when I push the letter Z, I'd like it to play the sound of a cow mooing. You could say that when I click the mouse button, uh, I'd like my game character to shoot a gun or move up or, or whatever it might be. So that's our handlers and our listeners, and what we're going to have to do today is use both together to solve the problems. So let's take a look at what the events actually look like as far as the computer is concerned when they occur. So the way we're going to do that is go into our Pygame module and I'm going to come down to, where's a good place to put this, to just underneath here. This says for event in Pygame.event. So this is when something happens, the computer will quickly sweep through repeatedly and look at all the different events that have happened because multiple things might have happened at once. I might have a gamepad and be pushing up and left and one of the, um, the buttons on the gamepad simultaneously. So there might be a few events that we need to deal with. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go print bracket event. And then what I'm going to do is spell print correctly, like that. So I've got print event. And you'll notice that because it's part of this for loop, uh, I've used, uh, I've tabbed it in as well. The computer actually put that in for me, so it should put that in for you as well. So let's click on that. Uh, let's run the program and see what happens. The first time you go to run, this is probably grayed out. Uh, it's just the way it, uh, things work in Pygame. So you can manually for the first time run it by clicking run. And then either uh, one week two is not right, so I'm on week three. It's just this one here, the one that says run with Alt Shift F10 next to it. Uh, what would you like to run? I would like to run the week three template today, please. Okay, so I've got my, uh, my black screen, and on the face of it, nothing's happening. But in actual fact, if we look, and I drag this window here over to the side, 
and I'm going to pop that here. What I've got is I've got the Python console, which is this window just here, and this print event, every time I use print for anything, uh, the, the result of that appears down here in this console window at the bottom. And already there's some different things all starting to appear. Look, as I move my mouse around in here, you can see lots of different data coming in, and we need to try and unpack uh, what that might be. So let's try some things and see if we can get to grips with um, with what that's doing. So I'm just going to, I've got my hand on my mouse and I'm going to click and hold the left mouse button and now I'm releasing it and I'm going to click and hold the right mouse button and release it, uh, the mouse wheel, click and hold and release it, rolling the mouse wheel forwards a little bit, rolling it backwards a little bit and on my mouse, because I've got a fancy one, I've got a back button as well. Let's see what happens when I, oh, that was me moving the mouse. Let's click and hold that and release it. I wonder, he said, looking at his keyboard, let's try some more things. Um, pushing and holding a key on the keyboard and releasing that key and a different key. And uh, let's have a look. Uh, da, da, and, da, and okay like that uh, and I don't know if you noticed <laughs> I moved the mouse but what you could actually see as I was doing that though as you can see as I hold down uh, the individual key on the keyboard so this is me holding down the letter S at the moment uh, that triggers an event and also when I take my finger off the key as well that also triggers an event as well so at the moment in my program I'm not actually telling the program to do anything with that information uh, it's simply telling me that it's happened but once we know things are happening in our programs, that starts to become very interesting because if we know something's happening, then we can start to uh, to actually make something happen in response to that. We can, we can have and we can create this uh, interactivity in our software. We can start to do that. So we have a simple one to do, and this is on bornedcode.com, is to write some code to get the uh, a little shape to follow the mouse around on the screen. That's a really good start point for a game. And, uh, and let's have a look at how we might do that. So here I am back on Born to Code. <clears throat> it's gone down a bit. There's a badge task a second ago as well, actually, which you should be able to do based on what we just did a second ago. Uh, here we are. So I'm going to grab this code just here. Uh, let's have a look before we go and copy and paste. So the first step here, screen dot fill black. Well, I'm pretty sure what that does is that just takes the entire that big window that's on the screen and just paints that pure black. What's the next thing? It's a variable assignment, so we've got a variable that we're creating called mouse position, and we're saying that the mouse position needs to be equal to uh, Pygames mouse dot get position function. So I think we can safely assume that what's going to happen is this grabs the x y coordinates of the mouse at any point in time, and then stores it just here, uh, and then we're going to print the mouse position to the uh, the console like we did before. So that's quite useful. Let's grab that and copy. And let's go into um, PyCharm. And we're going to pop that particular bit of code just here in there like so. As always, a bit of indentation needed. Tab, 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 like that. Uh, I've got this print event. I imagine that's probably going to clutter up my console a little bit. So what I'm going to do is just turn that into a comment temporarily, I think, just while I'm coding. And... Yeah, I think that looks pretty good. I'm just thinking aloud here, because again, I do record these things live. I'm just experimentally, I'm just going to tab this in as well, so that it only does this when an event is triggered. Uh, I think that might help things along a little bit as well, so it's part of that. I might come to regret that. Let's find out. So, run. Okay, here we go. So, I've got my, uh, my window just here. That's not swamped with data at the moment. Over there, my console, you can see here, is my mouse coordinates. So let's have a look. Slowly does it. So as I slowly inch the mouse across to the right, you can see the X coordinate increasing, can't you? You can see the Y coordinates fairly steady. I'm trying not to move up or down too much. But as I go up, the Y coordinate decreases. As I go left, the Y coordinate decreases. And because we know that up there, the origin point is 0, 0, there we go, zero, zero. So my mouse is in the very, very toppest, leftest hand corner. So that's pretty handy, isn't it? So we've got the ability now to record whereabouts the pointer is on the screen. Um, our next step is going to be to draw something at that set of coordinates on the screen, to draw something 
uh, where the mouse is at that moment in time. So back to border code, let's scroll down a little bit. And we're just here. So what's different to last time around? Well, uh, here's line by line. So fill the screen with black, fill the screen with black. So we're still doing that. Get the location of the mouse pointer. So we're still doing that. Uh, previously, we were printing this, uh, the actual coordinates. We're printing those to the console. I've commented that out so the computer will ignore that. But what I've got this new this time is I'm setting up a couple of new variables. Uh, I'm setting up this thing called player 1x. So that'll be the player 1's x position, the, the coordinates on the x axis, and their position on the y axis. So uh, it's going to take that from mouse position and mouse position like so. So it's going to pull that data out of here, take the X, take the Y and store them. What does the final line say? The final line is something very familiar to us by now. It's asking Pygame to draw a rectangle on the screen which will be red and the beginnings of that rectangle that we're going to draw is going to be at coordinate X and coordinate Y which is wherever the mouse is at that point in time and it'll be 40 by 40. So let's grab those new lines Boink. and into Pygame Grab that print and uh, paste in the new code. As always, it's part of the for loop, so it's got to be tabbed in. So like that, there it is, that's being tabbed in, so that's all part of it. And again, just to be nice and neat, I'm gonna, yeah, I'll comment that out. Right, let's take a look and see what happens now then. So, uh, run. And here we go, moment of truth. Da, 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 da. There we go. So what I've got is, as I move it around, there's a slight lag on it because I'm recording a video tutorial, but broadly speaking, the square is drawn um, on the mouse pointer. Now, what's quite interesting, if you look very carefully, is that the mouse pointer, no matter where I go, the mouse pointer isn't in the center of the square, is it? It's not in the center of the square. The square measures, I think you said 40 by 40 pixels, something like that. Uh, but what I'd really, really like is for, for it to be dead center instead. And um, let's just go back to Born to Code for a second. This uh, very, very nicely actually takes us to the badge tasks for this lesson. The gold task is to see if you can work out how to make it so that it's drawn in the center of the mouse pointer. So when you're choosing your X and Y coordinates, which is the mouse position like you've got, is there anything we need to do to those lines, anything we can modify to try and make it so that the shape appears dead center. I'm not gonna tell you how to do that, that's the badge task. Um, and uh, what would also be quite interesting as well would be for the platinum task, you might want to attempt that, which is to tweak things around so that when I click the mouse, it changes the color of the shape that we draw. Uh, in the code, at the moment, the shape is always red. The shape's always red just here. But maybe, maybe, maybe we could play around and do some experimenting to see if we could make it. Every time I click the mouse, if I click the mouse with the left button, it turns green, the right button turns yellow or something. It doesn't matter what the colors are, but just to increase and add that functionality. And I think on the uh, online notes, down the bottom here, there's some ideas for handling different events that, uh, again, this, this isn't the solution. This isn't the solution, but I, I think you might find that uh, to be a direction, shall we say, that you could perhaps go in to try and solve that problem. So that is uh, event listeners and event handlers.